In this video, we will learn how to find the inverse of a piecewise defined function. First, to find the inverse of a function defined by an equation, consider a one-to-one -one function f of x. In this case, we will choose f of x equals 7x minus 2. To find the inverse of this function, first let y equal f of x so that the entire equation is defined in terms of x and y only. This gives us y equals 7x minus 2. Next, interchange x and y. Now we have x equals 7y minus 2. Then, solve for y in terms of x. So we get negative 7y equals negative x minus 2. Check your work carefully, as a mistake here can give us the wrong inverse function. Continuing to solve for y, we get y equals 1 7th x plus 2 7ths. Finally, let y equal f inverse of x. Thus, the inverse function is f inverse of x equals 1 7th times x plus 2 7ths. The inverse function can also be found in another way. You can also solve for the inverse by first letting f of x equal y, and then solving for x in terms of y. You would then let x equal f inverse of y, and finally replace y with x. We can verify our work by evaluating the original function when x is equal to the inverse function, or by evaluating the inverse function when x is equal to the original function. In both cases, the results would yield the true statement x equals x. Using the four-step procedure shown, let's find the inverse of a piecewise defined function. The piecewise defined function p of x is defined as the absolute value of x when x is less than or equal to 0, and as the cube root of x when x is greater than 0. First, we will consider the absolute value of x, which we will define as f of x for now. Following the table outline, begin by letting y equal f of x, which gives us y equals the absolute value of x. Then, interchange x and y to get x equals the absolute value of y. Now, solve for y in terms of x. Note that solving for y yields two answers, y equals x and y equals negative x. Because this function is defined only for values less than or equal to zero in p of x, the only correct solution is y equals negative x. Finally, let y equal f inverse of x. Thus, the inverse function of f of x is f inverse of x equals negative x. Similarly, we can now let g of x equal the cube root of x and follow the same four-step procedure. So we have y equals the cube root of x, then interchanging x and y, we get x equals the cube root of y. Solving for y in terms of x, we get y equals x cubed. Thus, the inverse function of g of x is g inverse of x equals x cubed. Putting these pieces together, we get p inverse of x equals negative x when x is less than or equal to zero, and x cubed when x is greater than zero.